da, da, da. Da, da, da. So what I want to tell you on, on leaps is that it should go to the bottom of the mortar joint, okay? The reason is that when water gets into the cavity and accumulates, well, we don't want it to accumulate. We, we, we want this weep to be able to, to address that moisture on the cavity side. And if it's, if it's riding on top of the bed joint, in theory, you're going to need three eighths and then three eighths of an inch of standing water at the bottom of the cavity before your weep hole sees any action. We show this at the sill and it also happens at the, um, at the top of the wall. And that is weeps in the horizontal orientation. And then what about this? Here's a weep underneath the flashing, and in this case, it's it's functioning as a vent, not really a weep at all. It's functioning as a weep here, but it's functioning as a vent here. And when I say a vent, what I mean is let's assume that, you know, lower in the cavity, you will have a weep, say at the window head. So you've got this tall vertical cavity. You want convection to take place. So you want, of course, the as a, as a weep at the bottom, it lets water out, but a good weep device also allows a flow of air. So you want air to get in and up and out. You want a flow of air through the cavity, through the drainage cavity. I know we call it a drainage cavity, but you could also think of it as a ventilation cavity as well, because when we have that nice flow of air through the cavity, any moisture that is sitting inside that cavity is trapped, because moisture will get trapped. It's not all just gonna flow out through the weep. Um, the, the, the airflow will uh, facilitate evaporation of that water and you'll be less likely to get efflorescence.